strategy which is like social distancing and which is completely out of place because social distancing has nothing to do with the communicable disease. It is the physical distancing which has something to do with the uh, communicable disease. Why I am saying that we really need to say that social distancing is an out of proportion and which should not be replicated any further or should not be talked about any further because this will kill the social trust which is the social capital on which sustainability will depend. So if we erode social trust, if we create stigma within the economy, within the society, then we will miss out sustainable development goal. Why? I'll just come back very soon. And then the other one is that the other response strategy is to invest more and more on uh, high tech ventilators and water, uh, I mean, testing, etc. This reminds me, you know, I'm not saying this is wrong, but my question is that this reminds me of the arsenic prevention uh, measures between 1990 and 2003 in India, and where all testing labs were created, and many arsenic removal technologies were implemented on the ground. But after six months, they all failed. And all testing labs still work, but still number of arsenic, content, uh, uh, arsenic patients are increasing every day. So basically, we are not just providing the basic minimum requirement of drinking water, which is, which is an safe. Similarly here, we are not providing hygiene through providing good quality water and energy. So how do we expect that implementing by buying, purchasing ventilators and test kits, we will solve the problem. So all past histories do not show that this has solved the problem. The number of cancer patients is also increasing every day. So my question is that we should be, as scientists should be questioning and learning from history, we should say what we really need to do. I'll come to the third uh, response strategy, which is about lockdown, right? So what's it, what it has to do with the sustainable development goals. In 14th century, China and Italy used to apply this quarantine on a area specific uh, measure. In 21st century, we are replicating a 14th century uh, uh, cultural practices in China and Italy worldwide there when we are so much uh, through media, social media, internet to make people aware and to make people aware how to manage a communicable disease. We are doing it on day-to-day -day basis for many more communicable diseases. So I think this has become an out of proportion. Why this has become out of proportion? Because if you look into the kind of loss to economic um, assets, loss to economic income flow, and loss to human uh, labor time, productive time, this worries me that what are we really doing in terms of SDGs and are we going to achieve SDGs? I'll just show you a couple of slides to wrap up what I want to say and what is my line of argument here. So if we look at, uh, if we look at the slide which I'm going to show now, that will show that um, that will show that basically, if we think, then we will see that the concept and framing of sustainable development goal is the basic triple bottom line, which says the economy need to thrive, environment need to thrive, society need to thrive. If you think right now, and we will see that economy is not thriving, society is not thriving because, because of severe mental pressure on every individual. This is going to make 
the fallout of the mental well-being which is one of the sdgs which i already told you so basically society and economy is not thriving environment yes people are showing fantastic photograph that clean air clean water etc are happening but at the cost of economy and society it did not mention in sdg that we do not need economy and society we do need economy and society along with environment so there needs to be a combination of all three but right now the response strategy which is politically implemented in all the countries i would say politically because multidisciplinary scientific advice was not used at all and so from that point of view we can just see that economy society and environment this thriving three sectors which was thought of under sdgs is going to fall too so i do not see this as one way how we can really achieve sdg goals if two are killed and only environment is thriving then for whom the environment will be so uh, i would say another thing that uh, so this is the framing of sustainability where it says that okay so economy society and environment should be thriving in this area of sustainability so on a narrow zone where the sustainability will be achieved but for me this is a very narrow concept and i would provide you a different framing and which i will use to show that why the current uh, 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 response strategies how i see them <coughs> so if i go to the next slide <coughs> so if i go to the next slide then i would say that what we need to keep in mind is what we need to keep in mind is that like that is going down labor is sitting idle the factories are closed so what will happen right well from for my point of view that can be thought of as an on is a flow flow of income is reduced so we will have less savings in future and so that can cause an investable fund crisis so very simple macroeconomics but i take a different approach and where i see that basically even if my income goes down suppose i suddenly fall ill for one year my income may go down but what might happen is that i may have asset i might have savings so i i i have asset which can be thought of as wealth and if i if i consider that if there are an asset we use for our future investment so what we really need to see from economy's point of view i mean i'm trying to transcend from individual and coming to the economy's point of view what really matters is that are national wealth getting eroded due to the response strategy of lockdown or not because what i feel in the whole covid-19 discourse as i have shown you what really is coming out as major uh, point which needs to be resolved now and here is the lockdown uh, response strategy and for that what i see is that if you think of the human capital it is eroding as i said the mental health is eroding people are out of job and people are i mean there are several several things i do not need to repeat because you are every day bombarded with all the information just match these with this that human capital is eroding social capital because of this social trust concept or the social distancing the social capital is declining we are killing the communities well known knowledge of physical distancing 
in case of communicable disease, which we are used to already for COVID-19, as if we are brainwashed not to think of physical distancing, but it's a social distancing. That is going to be a killer for social capital. You think of knowledge capital, this community or traditional knowledge of how to handle a patient who is having an infectious disease, we have now ID hospitals, we have many other ways how to handle them. And you know, it's just not that for COVID-19, we do not have a vaccine. For chikungunya, we do not have a vaccine, but we have how to handle it, prevent it. So preventive measures, right? So we are not considering the preventive measures. So knowledge capital, we are not making use of knowledge capital, which is lying with the 7.8 billion people. We are just making it a top down, maybe 200 people's decisions that what should be the knowledge but the, the community need to learn and ignoring the empowerment which already people have is through social capital and knowledge capital and human capital these are really getting eroded which worries me and also what i just see is that physical capital if you just think of physical capital <coughs> i would say that many many capital say aircraft say industries which are not running now the machines when they open up it will take long time to bring them up into functionality so <coughs> social capital is also eroded and if you think of natural capital our water resource is already for 50% of the global population, it is not worthy for meeting any hygiene standard. So if capital erodes, it worries me how sustainable development in the long run will be managed. So I see that lockdown is eroding okay. and which might have to be, unless Hello. we withdraw uh, it very fast, then the sustainable development both in the short run and in the long run is ah, going to be affected so with these words i'll stop here and i'll take any question when it comes up thank you very much thank you madam for your wonderful words and many thoughts that you have shared with us and opened uh, many discussions opened up many discussions here and i can see very interesting questions and comments in the thread but we'll come back to you later because we have other speakers waiting here as well thank you so much um so we have got our next speaker dr abu hussain sir um so um, I have a question for Dr. Abu Hussain sir, but before that I just wanted to comment on the Millennium Development Goal and the Sustainable Development Goal. How this has been implemented and how, how what was the pathway for Bangladesh so far? Basically for Sustainable Development Goal, uh, for Bangladesh we, we, we actually have witnessed huge success in these indicators and some of the indicators and goals such as we as Bangladesh as a developing country with the limited resources we thought we did really well in case of poverty eradication compared to anywhere in the world and also reducing infant mortality and also what we what we think that we have done well in case of um, enrollment in primary schools and attend gender parity with more girls than boys in the primary and secondary schools. And in some some sectors we have done well, but in some other sectors in goal uh, 11, in case of urban living, in some living standards, in case of environment, in case of health, we are still uh, lacking below. But uh, my question is, uh, with this with this new challenge with COVID-19, we are facing more challenges in case of uh, drastic fall in the remittance, because remittance is one major part of our economy. Around 17 percent GDP we generated from that side, from from remittance income. All also, there is huge laying off by the uh, RMG sector in our country. Many of the factories are closing, many workers are losing jobs. So my yeah, question is whether the these uh, MDGs and the SDGs uh, were um, thought yeah, about by United on. Nations. How how uh, how these were how the theoretical underpinning as well as the 
preparedness of the targeted countries, uh, whether this has been checked for the less developed countries or how, what obstacles these agencies are actually facing to meeting these SDGs and how Bangladesh has actually tackled all these challenges so far and how we handle it with these added problems. So, um, so I would, I would like to ask uh, our today's expert opposition sir with these questions. Uh, can you sir, please enlighten us a little bit on this? Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's nice to be part of a great congregation joined by, participated by people from multiple countries. And it is also Absolutely. nice to be talking so I, alongside like ask, uh, Professor Joyce Leroy and please Professor Hamid uh, 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 Ms. Mundi actually asked a very distinctive question uh, by me. So I'm going to focus on three different issues. The first one is the general premises Hello. of the SDGs in general and Bangladesh in particular, and last of all, whether Bangladesh can succeed in implementing the SDGs by the stipulated timeline of 2030. So, for technical reasons, I cannot show you the slides, but I'm sure I'm very audible. Now, as Ms. Lundi mentioned in the beginning, the HDGs are actually an extension of the MDGs. And this is, in fact, a continuation yeah. of the United Nations World Bank and policies for the emancipation of the developing okay. as well as the least developed countries. Gigi. And also, the HDGs are time bound policies account which contain careful insights into social and economic problems. Oh. As well as the solution to the problem, and right? also the possible sources of finance. And they come in the disguise of five P's people, planet, we are used to knowing no, no, no. Three P's 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 and public private Hello. partnership, P2P. Hello. So, the partly prominent English letter P Hello. of the past. Hello. ডিপার্টমেন্টিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিট
the policy tamil this is the email from the united nations world bank and i apni email e click karen na sir email e la email din ye assumption that in the developing country as both email stages we join up the as deep developed countries and we know the famous gospel is stages theoretical condition condition of take off take off right to maturity and the age of mass consumption etc this clearly notes the initial conditions concerning the resource and dominance and also the uniqueness of the culture traditions and laws of a particular country for example bangladesh is not as resource poor even in 2020 as britain or us was 50 years ago somalia does not have the same quality human resources as india does if poverty is an indicator of a country's resilience to dealing with catastrophic uncertainties then again the countries differ in a big way for example compare australia's mean wealth of 386000 dollars per adult with india's 14500 bangladesh's 6643 and central african republics 749 as such the timeline for the goals and targets set by the un is not in conformity with the particular country's readiness to embark on the mission and support its execution through mobilization of internal resources one has to consider the failure of our limited success of such sponsor policies in the past for example we can recall the population policy of the united nations in the 1970s and that seriously affected countries like india and china india and china had to retreat from that particular policy now as a measure of controlling these are our even participants here like me this just the abortions now that in the indians in, in india abortion is completely banned in china okay the proportion of girls to boys is much lower than before so they are now in, not encouraging just the one child policy they are encouraging at least two child policy mm. No, Now, achieving the SDGs is after all a constrained optimization. Know that. Now, here the biggest constraint mm. is the funds. The United Nations suggests two sources of funding: internal resource mobilization and international aid. The first mechanism is a far cry, or even absurd, for some of the poor countries, especially the African countries. Some of these countries, any at all. currently depend on international flows of food items to feed certain sections of their citizens on a daily basis match with so, that sir to join karte the daily ki bola sir as many as 36 countries may face famine in the near future owing to covid-19 outbreak the second source of finance is an extreme form of external dependence poor countries are just at the mercy of their rich counterparts उंटी with the rules and regulations of the donor countries would get the preference now that as the cheese did not originate from within the targeted countries themselves they were actually forced on us therefore these policy prescriptions are inherently weak as the implementing countries may not have the proper mindset and understanding of the problems nor do they have the home grown expertise to implement the mechanisms Many countries even do not have a benchmark database to start with. For example, the SDG Goal 17 reads: strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. This particular goal itself has a total of 19 proposals or directives concerning finance, technology, capacity building, trade, and systemic issues. all these proposals accepting two of the three systemic issues which are policy and institu- institutional coherence and data monitoring and accountability require global partnerships 
Besides funding, the Global Partnership promotes technical assistance. This constitutes another form of external dependence, which can also be presumed to absorb part of the international funding. Thirdly, the degree of openness of globalization presents yet another form of external dependence. The economic performance of a particular country becomes tied with the performance of the trade partners. Finally, the richer countries seldom apply the principles of liberal trade, as you all know that. More often than not, they actually take resort to protectionism and find ways not to honor the bilateral trade agreements. Now, can Bangladesh succeed? We know that Bangladesh has achieved remarkable success in the following areas. For example, extreme poverty, gender equality in education and employment, literacy, infant and maternal maternity days, vocational education, information technology. In 2010, the percentage of population below the poverty line in Bangladesh was sorry for the pause, 31.5%, which dropped to 21.8% in 2018. These figures are still high compared to those in some other countries in South Asia. However, poverty reduction has been largely confined to the rural areas. At the same time, the percentage of people vulnerable to poverty has increased and currently stands at about 50% or about 40% in 2000. Now, these are the groups of people that are in between the top 20% of the richest people, rich people, and the people that live below the poverty line. So vulnerability here means they are just at the border line. They may actually find themselves below the poverty line anytime. Now, in the gender parity index has been on the rise and in excess of unity is greater than one in primary and secondary education, which means okay, more girls than boys are enrolled in the primary and secondary education. The progress has also continued at a, at a slower rate though, in case of tertiary and vocational education till 2040. Thereafter, the gender parity index has tended downward for tertiary and technical education. More than 90% of the population have access to electricity. About 99% of the population access to mobile phone nest. Similar progresses can be reported for other parameters for Bangladesh too. But the COVID-19 has exposed our preparedness of lack of it to deal with uncertainties. The fear is that a possible could prove even more devastating. In the worst possible case, the virus would take permanence like its predecessors, predecessor variants. In either case, Bangladesh has to embark on short, medium, and long-term planning to combat probable catastrophes like the present one. The future annual budgets and the longer-term plans must set aside an allocation of funding to this end from internal sources. As economic activities are coming to a standstill, the government revenue is destined to suffer. An additional head of expenditure will now compete for a reduced level of government revenue. Therefore, Bangladesh is likely to compromise with its course of implementation of some of the SDGs besides other development plans. Can Bangladesh rely on external funding in these trying times? Bangladesh may, like many other countries, get a moratorium on the principle and the interest accrued or at best a debt relief. But that would be of little help unless new money comes in. The rich countries and the international institutions will channelize funding for researching epidemiology. Bangladesh thus has to succeed in attracting external finance, financial assistance to achieve SDGs, if at all, by 2030. Now, Hello, join coding Supplement Professor Joyce Roy. Professor Joyce Roy was talking about the shortage of investable fund, which is very likely. Now, as solution, or Professor Roy was expecting that the wealth of the people, that's the savings, they will utilize their savings to actually invest in the future. Now, I just gave the figures of some of the country's assets. So the figures are assets per adult people. 
Now, deep in that, countries like Bangladesh, Central African Republic, and India, they have very much little to dispose of, actually. Now, in case of consumption, we know in situations like this, or in situations where, where countries are in massive war, people are actually forced to save some of their money. The people that can save, actually. So not the people that are poor. Now, once the epidemic would be over, these people will actually use up their savings. They are creating demand for certain types of commodities that are non-essential, and as well as essential beyond food items. So therefore, maybe we'll still have a revival of the economy at one point. But one important issue is that the COVID-19 is unlike the uh, other viruses. The other viruses did not have the economic activities COVID-19 did. So already, you know, so many people are losing jobs and it is apprehended that as many as 850 million people will be starving. So social capital, yes. Now, probably we'll have to come up with different forms of other social capital. For example, the platform we are using at the moment is part of the social capital. So therefore, people will find ways and means to communicate uh, among themselves. With these few words, I conclude my speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your uh, for for your um, view in uh, in in case of the economy and the COVID nineteen and the whole scenario. So we have seen, we have observed a diverse um, diverse effects that made. But um, I would apologize, our speaker Dr. Hamidul Hawk could not join us due to a technical reason, but. We still uh, continue with this webinar yeah. because we have many yeah. interesting questions that I can see in the chat room. So since we said that this is going to be interactive, mm -hmm. so we'll go through to the questions and start answering them. Um, since um, both of uh, both the both is here. Yes, sir. Okay, that's great. Okay. All right. So uh, so my next question will go to Dr. Hamidul Hawk. Just to connect, sir, for. For quite a while, but we could not. So it's good that Sir has joined us. Um, so, Sir, uh, since we have been talking about COVID 19 and its impact on economy or sustainable development goals, would you please talk, uh, would you please give us an insight that how our economy should be framed or be structured, or whether there we need any different policies, or whether there is a the uh, chances that we can look at it in a different way because many countries are actually uh, allowing funds but in our country we are also trying but it's not enough or it's not going to the uh, disadvantaged people you can see that in the newspaper so what should be the what should be the pathway to handle this problem whether it's a short-term goal or whether uh, we can look at it in a, a long-term framework and how can we shape our, how can we handle this uh, immediately. So uh, this, uh, I'll go to Hamidul Hawk, sir, sir. After you, sir. Hamidul Hawk, sir, I request you if you can join us. <laughs> So I hope you can hear me. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can just in, in between, can, uh, since Sir uh, is not available now, on um, I cannot uh, find him on the video. So I will just go back to some questions in the chat room. There are many interesting comments there. So I may invite Dr. George T. Roy because uh, there are some questions that are directed towards Madam, uh, requesting that whether George T. Roy can answer a few of the questions. So Madam, after you, can you please um, uh, pick up some questions from the chat room and uh, answering them? Sure. I can see, no, but something has happened that I can't switch on my camera anymore. I don't know why. 
exactly because yeah so whatever but i i think i'm audible so that should be fine right um okay i've seen the chat and i really like this question yes, and so i do not um, i uh, i see the good questions and which are not unanticipated so i did anticipate these questions so i'm really happy that these questions have come so if i take some of these questions i mean which are <coughs> like um, i can answer multiple questions also so the question is is not social distancing same as physical distancing my answer is uh, the nuanced meaning is no if, if we look into the history then we will see that if you create social distancing in this by the term social distancing then what will happen is that there will be a stigma which will come up so anyone sneezing you will think that oh this i really need to keep away from that but you have mentioned one of you have mentioned that <clears throat> when you go out of your home you need to keep the safe distance in it's 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 in the culture of the west of social distancing when they stand in a queue in a bank they stand 2 feet away anyway in our countries we stand one upon another right so that's the cultural issue so social distancing is very much cultural within their system but what we are saying is that basically what we need is a physical distance even within a family if you have an infectious disease patient you need to have a social distancing uh, the physical distancing so physical distancing has a scientific connotation social distancing has some kind of cultural connotation so if we we are thinking that we need to prioritize science and knowledge then i would go for physical distancing rather than social distancing which is value loaded and i will not uh, promote the social distancing concept because for us the informal uh, insurance works much more than the developed countries anyone falls sick we just run and we give all the aids and that solves the problem even instead of taking to the hospital so these are the things which will be eroding gradually because everything cannot be done online so that is something very important we need to understand online many things can be done but not everything the second thing is that social trust you all are thinking that social trust will continue uh, even within uh, this um, social media but imagine what is the uh, digital divide in the whole world and with the digital divide are we talking only of you and me who are the privileged section in this society or are we talking of really the 500 50% of the 7.8 billion who has not tasted the uh developmental benefit so far so i think we are talking of ourselves but not talking of 7.8 billion and empowering them even if you implement social distancing can you imagine when your home is 7 feet by 7 feet without any decoration how can people live in that so these are the questions you all have been seeing these in the newspaper every day so that's a big issue but um, uh, whether lockdown is the only um, uh, solution if lockdown is not uh, implemented what could be better could we have done you see i think all the infectious diseases every season we get dengue and malaria how do we handle that we handle that by prevention by advisory by mass media by education by uh, uh, providing the for some chikungunya we don't have any specific medicine no vaccine so all these things we are handling in a particular way so we have that knowledge in the society we could have believed on human uh, i mean the empowerment and knowledge of this 
21st century people without going into 14th century draconian uh, top-down lockdown and where we are locking down but imagine the health workers they are working right so if they are working following a norm then those who are working in other sectors they could have also followed the same for some of the sectors you can but for some you cannot think of the informal sector they are totally out of uh, income and they have no uh, uh, guarantee that they will get back their jobs when they go back as agricultural labor even so migrant labor so there are multiple things so if we broaden our horizon beyond ourselves we will see that besides lockdown we are practicing many things and there should have been those things which that social capital could have been mobilized through the internet through the uh, mobile telephone through mass media so i think we should have believed in people instead of believing or uh, believing on 200 people and these 200 whether they will really uplift the economy we have never seen in the past that 200 people have lifted the economy it is the mass 7.8 billion who through their out of sheer labor lifts this burden food security who provides so we all need to keep this in mind and someone asked that whether there can be additional money for health sector whether new money will be coming i'm researching in um, climate change for past 30 years new money you know how much it has been discussed how much it has been talked about where is the new money there is no new money coming so it will be the same thing here also so if we do not learn from them from this and we think that global partnership will solve solve this problem i would say that uh, uh, we all are uh, living in a dream world and when this dream will get shattered we will be shattered uh, i mean in all other respects also so better we should start thinking how the economy starts moving and then how the learning from here we can keep in uh, with us about hygiene and all and someone asked that so how health sector problem can we solve i would say just provide 100 percent access to clean water and clean of uh, uh, i mean um, energy problem will be anyway solved so prevention is best than cure I'll stop here if there are no other questions because I could see these are the questions. But I learned from few countries, for example, Sweden, still they are keeping it as public health issue. They have not really entered into the political approaches to deal with the COVID-19. Now coming to the definitions or constructions of uh, sustainable development goals. Many criticisms gave us a message that the sustainable development goals are also constructed rhetorically because there were so many junctures uh, which were the uh, which were experienced with the destruction of uh, intervention by the mainstream. Uh, dominant economic growth model and the COVID-19 experience is giving us the lesson that we have been failed to institutionalize the uh, capacities in terms of protecting the people's interest and if you recall the three R in the uh, processes of sustainable development goals materialization like uh, reduce reuse and uh, recycling and COVID-19 though it is a very worldwide you know un unseen enemy but it gave us a um, lesson that uh, reducing overconsumption, which one of my Indian friends used to call it irresponsible consumption, uh, can be 
and strategy option to deal with the aftermath of COVID-19. And in uh, one of the goals also focused on uh, reducing the overconsumption or responsible consumption. Point two is the uh, pillars of sustainable development mentioned the number one is environmental development. And this crisis is also giving us a lesson that we consumed less in terms of fossil fuel, uh, all kinds of energy, uh, chemical input. So, so that is also a lesson. And third is the if the world number of world uh, you know poor population is three billion out of seven billion uh, world population. We we made so much by introducing political decision of uh, lockdown. And lockdown came with strategy of inefficiency, lacking of institutional capacity of administration. And that's why in order to uh, you know protect people from uh, this um, is since the health services, public health services, that's why this political approach. Now, in, in the context of Bangladesh, some people are asking whether life or life or life use is for uh, you know living. So, if we can protect livelihood, definitely people will be able to protect their lives. But lockdown approach cannot be the answer to protect uh, people who live with the World Bank definition under, uh, you know, poverty or below poverty line. In Bangladesh, we, we, we need to take into account that about 45% of our population are youth. And this youth population is a big capital in terms of human capital. And our informal economy, uh, if I'm wrong, Professor uh, uh, Adwar may, uh, sorry, Professor uh, Hossein may, uh, you know, correct me. At least 37% of our economy is backed by the informal economy. And this lockdown has totally, you know, uh, 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 brought the threatened to the informal economy, which is causing the extreme sufferings of the poor people, especially the youth who were engaged in informal economic sector. Now, what should we do? What should be the uh, strategic options? Our government uh, is giving priority on agriculture, food production, apprehending food crisis after the coronavirus. So, with sustainable development goals, if we can ensure food production, investing in agriculture and natural resource-based, uh, you know, uh, production, agriculture, fish, poultry, livestock, and engaging with the uh, financial and technical supports, uh, avail making the financial and technical supports available for the youth, perhaps we will be able to address the apprehended food insecurity in our country and that will also bring the benefits in terms of overall livelihoods of the poor people of course the rich and richest will be loser that's why they are demanding more and more this uh, you know additional financing for their sector but i personally is uh, not really convinced with this uh, you know uh, demand, but uh, we can go about with the investment first in agriculture, then in small and medium scale, uh, you know, industries, and of course, education, uh, which will also uh, make our people uh, uh, more aware, capable, and uh, taking care of.
uh, public health uh, issues. And finally, the social distancing and physical distancing. I don't find, okay, uh, conceptually we can argue whether it is social or physical, but my uh, uh, concern is the lockdown approach. Lockdown approach came up uh, as alternative of, uh, you know, failure in uh, ensuring the public health services to the people uh, from a poor country to a um, uh, rich country. Uh, our government, perhaps uh, Professor Aul Rosen already mentioned, uh, allocated uh, special uh, made a commitment for special allocations, uh, giving priority in small and medium scale factories, as, and then second priority is agriculture and their health. Some people ask about healthcare. Of course, yeah, it will need long, long time to uh, strengthen our healthcare services. But to me, the short term, meaning emergency work, uh, immediate, uh, uh, short, medium term, and then medium term program is more essential in order to comply with the sustainable development uh, goals in Bangladesh. Thank you so much. Anunna. Okay, thank you, sir. So I'm really happy that you could find it. Actually, there are some technical uh, problems that some of our uh, faculty members also could not join. Our honorable VC sir wanted to join us today, but uh, there are technical issues. As we said that we are actually uh, emerging to another platform. We are trying to learn how to manage with these technologies because this is totally new to us. So we, I think we talked a lot about the um, uh, development goals and also how these uh, social distancing or physical distancing are hampering the economic activities and our policies and our future uh, plans as well. So I can still see that people are really engaged with this session, but we are already over by 10 to 15 minutes, I think, with the session. So um, I think it was a really nice um, uh, conversation and, and, and a nice our speakers have uh, shared with us and we are enriched with so many information and also has shown that whether uh, there should be a long-term goal or the short-term goals should be focused more on and what are the what are the goals what are the targets what are the targets that Bangladesh is trying to achieve or the less developing country, countries that are trying to achieve but we have to immediate we have to actually act on the immediate problem now and we um, because COVID-19 is a challenge we can face, as our speakers also say that there are viral challenges. These challenges are totally new to us. So we cannot we cannot follow the same path that we have followed in the past. This challenge and the other challenges or the other uh, crisis will say to what we have seen now. So I'd like to uh, conclude today's session, but uh, probably we have another question on no. 19 or some other. We sincerely yes, appreciate your initiative very much and let us continue it and uh, perhaps we'll be prepared with this technical, uh, you know, difficult. It's not really very technical, it's a um, uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, skill and knowledge. Yes. <laughs> I sincerely appreciate yes. your initiative. Let us continue it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Anunna and to all those participants for raising very good question and I really learned so much from uh, two professors also. Thank you. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us today in this webinar and hopefully we'll meet in another webinar because Eastern University is initiating this so that we are engaged and we can share our views. So I'd like to um, I'd like to conclude today's session and I'd like to thank all the facilities that uh, Eastern Universities has provided and I'd like to thank Network Placement Cell, CPTC, IT Support, EG Authority about uh, thinking about opening up this platform to discuss and uh, share all these issues with everyone and hopefully we'll meet um, another time and I'd like to also conclude that all the participants who have joined us today will be issued with the e-certificate because we want to recognize that how important our participants 
uh, are to us. So we have hope to meet you again in another webinar and it will hopefully continue this webinar series and we will connect in future as well. So we will look for a better future and hopefully we will all overcome this challenge together. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Okay, ma'am, I wanted to tell you something that uh, some of my faculties could not join, but I see some one faculty I could manage to join her, Israt Shad, uh, Sadia. Uh, she joined finally, uh, but most of them couldn't join for some reason, maybe some technical issues. Right. Yeah, next so time I hope. Sure. So they, they have registered that they could not join today. Yes, they, they have registered.